CataractCoach.com successfully fixed this traumatic cataract and chronic medriasis. Part two, the pupiloplasty. Part one was the cataract surgery in which we had three or four clock hours of zonular loss, maybe even more. We put a capsule tension ring in. We were very careful. We avoided vitreous prolapse. You have a three-piece lens with the haptics in the sulcus, 90 degrees away from the area of zonular loss. And the optic is captured like a button through a buttonhole behind the uh, capsorexis. We're using a 10 proline on a CIF4 needle, poking through the limbus, grabbing the iris with these 23 gauge forceps, and pushing through, and there we've got our first bite. Now for the second bite, we come across to the other side, and we'll go through a paracentesis that's there, using a 27 gauge needle, grabbing the iris just with that needle, and using the lumen of that needle to dock the 10 proline needle. And so we can dock it there and pull it through. And that's how it's easy to get this 10 proline needle, the CIF4 needle. That's how we can get it through the paracentesis. And now we'll pull it through, grabbing it and comes through. There we go. We can now cut the needle off of it. There we go, coming through. And now we'll cut the needle off and we'll use a combination basically here of techniques that we learned from uh, Seepser, which is the Seepser knot technique. So grabbing here, there's the lens loop, the suture loop, come on top of the lens. We grab that loop, there it is, and we need to bring that out of this same paracentesis. So this is that Seepser knot technique here, using an iris push pull to facilitate that. And now that we have a loop outside the eye, we're going to use what Amr Agarwal taught me, the four-throw pupiloplasty. So now getting the loose end, put it through this loop four times. One, two, three, four. And this is a surgery that's actually done by a senior resident with professor guidance. So if a senior resident can do this technique, you can do it too. Again, this is Amr Agarwal's four-throw pupiloplasty. Thank you, Amr, for a beautiful technique. We find it very useful. So again, grabbing that suture end, we pulled it through four loops. And now what you simply do is you'll grab each end and we can pull the knot back in the eye. So holding that suture temporally, and now we'll go here nasally. And as we pull these two ends, watch how the knot, the four throws, go inside the eye and it'll come together, taking your time, being nice, slow and deliberate, and we can bring the iris together just like that. And by having four throws, the knot stays in place. It doesn't loosen up. If you just had three throws, it may loosen up. Now we can do another one and another one to lock this suture down. And that'll be very secure for a very long time. I find these tenoproline uh, sutures last forever inside the eye because they're protected. And they're not subject to a lot of force. So now, again, there's the locking suture. So it's a 4-1-1 is the technique here. Once that's done, these micro scissors can be used to cut the suture ends, and it's okay to leave them about a millimeter or so. Don't make them too short. They're going to have no effect in the eye. And then the two ends can simply be pulled out. The cut ends are pulled out, and we're done. Now we'll do another one there inferiorly, but let's close this triangular-shaped gap. And to close this gap, we're going to use that same 10 proline, but this time we're going to do a different technique. You notice right in the middle where that triangular defect is, there's a paracentesis. So why not use this as a learning opportunity for our young residents? Let's teach you the mechano technique. So here comes the mechano technique. So we passed it through. Now to tie this, what we'll do is we'll bring both ends out that paracentesis. Because you see this paracentesis is right near that triangular defect. So we'll bring out both of the free ends through this paracentesis and then tie them together. Again, when you're doing this and tying the sutures, be careful not to pull the iris too much because you're going to uh, end up cheese wiring the iris or even disinserting it. Now we're going to do an inferior throw here. So we close the superior defect, but you see the pupil is still too big and it's decentered. So we need to address that. So we're going to poke through the limbus using the 10 proline on the CF4. And then we come out the other side through it an incision. 
do the fourth row pupil plasma that we learned from Dr. Agarwal and bring it together nice and slowly. And you can see that's a beautiful result. Again, this, this knot is 411. And then we'll tie it completely. And when it's nice and secure, we'll cut the ends with the micro scissors and we'll be done with this. At the end, we need to do a bimanual irrigation aspiration. We want to be gentle here. So we're using a low flow setting here. Don't run a lot of fluid through the eye. We're using one hand to irrigate. That'd be the right hand. The left hand is to aspirate. We want to get the viscoelastic out. Don't shallow the anterior chamber. Don't allow uh, vitreous to come around from that defect. Here's the very end. You notice we've sutured the main incision. The cosmetic uh, result is actually quite excellent. While you see uh, here on the microscope view that it's slightly oval or ovoid in shape, at conversation distance, when you're looking at the patient from two or three feet away, it looks perfectly normal. And more importantly, it matches the other eye in ambient room lighting. There's a sufficient amount of view to have a good examination of the retina, and yet a small enough pupil to give a good functional and anatomic result. Thank you for watching.